Well, you heard it there in the news break. We've been talking about it this morning. Another data breach, another uh, cybersecurity hack. This one, Asia, Europe. Yeah, much like the other ones. And we knew when it was going to happen because we check our email overnight. And from our IT, the corporate manager, oh, there's like 50 emails quarantined. Every time that happens, we say, oh, there was another one. Sure enough, you go to the headlines, and there it is. Yeah, but what amazes me, and maybe Sean, uh, Sean Tuma, who's going to be is our guest right now, he's a cybersecurity expert. He's also an attorney that deals with this kind of stuff on right. a regular basis. But why is it that our little company is secure, but a company like Merck, is it? Yeah, right. Are they just targeting the big one? I don't know. Well, we've got to ask him about that. Sean Tuma, cybersecurity expert. He's an attorney, too. He deals with this stuff all the time in court. First of all, thanks for your time, buddy. Thanks for talking to us on short notice. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thank you all for having me. Let me start off by cautioning you. Never say you're secure. Right. Okay. None, yeah. of, us, uh, none of us are secure. I bet. That was one of our big questions for you, Sean, was, you know, just on a personal level, if they're going after big companies, big drug companies, uh, Russian energy companies, Good Lord, what chance do we stand on a, on, a, on a personal level? Well, that's a great question. Look, I've been representing companies with ransomware attacks. I have many going on right now where I help them with this. And it hits companies of all sizes, from uh, big companies down to small medical practices to individuals. And, you know, in a sense, when you look at what – what allows a ransomware like this to take place, or even the WannaCry, which is, was fairly similar, it's having outdated equipment in many cases, outdated computers with old operating systems, or that do not have their security patches installed and up to date. And in that sense, individuals and small companies may be more responsive to doing those things, keeping their equipment updated and installing those patches than some of these big, large worldwide companies that, you know, we think of their offices in in the more uh, developed nations. But they also have offices in less developed nations where they probably don't have access to a lot of that like we do. How does Sean? How does this virus spread or the ransomware? Does somebody actually have to open an email, or does it just happen? Well, it, it uh, both really. It has both means of doing it. It 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 generally starts with an email. Someone not just opening the email. It's not the opening the email that matters. It's the either clicking on the link mm. or opening a Windows or, I'm sorry, a Microsoft attachment, which is being used with this one, right. that has the malware within it. Okay, so how compelling was this email that somebody <laughs> and every single right. one of these companies was dumb enough to click on it and open it? Sadly, it doesn't have to be very compelling at all. That We've is sad. Seen, yeah, I mean, look, I, I deal with all kind of cyber events for companies, and most of what I see in my practice is not the James Bond sophisticated kind of hacking. It's phishing emails that lead to companies having problems. That's the big target zone because we all click on emails that, you know, it's not the email doesn't come in saying, hey, click here, I'm loaded with malware. <laughs> it, doesn't even, it doesn't even come in saying, hey, I'm the prince wanting to give you $25 million. You remember from that? Oh, we, were, we were talking about it earlier. What yeah. do you mean? That's not real? Yeah. Oh, geez. No, I mean, now <laughs> it says, hey, I'm a LinkedIn connect. You know, connect yeah. with me on LinkedIn. Click here. And it's a clone of a LinkedIn email that looks just oh, like wow. it. Or it's a FedEx delivery email that says click here. Those are the ways that we're duping people into what we call phishing. We, well, engineering. I, I see, see a lot of somebody doing that. Oh, I, no, yeah, we, we see companies all the time. We grumble and moan, you know, don't use person, no personal business uh, at work. And you think it's just, you know, for a lack of productivity. Mostly it's because of cybersecurity. You're right. I mean, look, the first thing I do when I represent a company proactively is we go in and implement appropriate policies and procedures focused on cybersecurity. Then we put them through training. And I go in and explain to them, look, we're not just being the, the, the man here, yeah. you know, trying to be hard on you. Here's why we do this, you know, and explain real life cases to them of where companies have been brought down by a thumb drop that was left, you know, in the parking lot that was loaded with malware, clicking on emails. And like you said, 
personal business. Right. This is this is based on the averages. The more you can cut down from your network, the better off you're going to be. Well, you have this this latest one, Sean. This ransomware. They said uh, they just at the top of the hour they uh, announced that it's three hundred dollars a computer. So somebody like Merck is hacked. Do they pay it? Well, that's a great question because, look, the other side of this, we've been talking about the proactive side of protecting yourself. The key to defeating ransomware is having your data and your system backed up in an offline place so it doesn't get encrypted as well. If you have backups, you restart and restore. You don't pay. But um, when you're talking about a company like Merrick, you know, it could be 10,000 computers or 1,000, sure. 100, each one uh. that has to have the ransom paid for it. The problem with this one is instead of having a unique Bitcoin wallet like most ransomware has done in the past, this one uses one wallet with one email address. And the provider for the email address blocked the email. So now even if you want to pay it, you can't reach the criminal to communicate oh, with them by wow. email because you don't know how to connect with them. Wow. Well, it, yeah, I think the bottom line is they are way ahead of us on this. You know, the, the the bad guys are in the lead right now until we catch up. But in the meantime, careful what you open. I know that sounds oversimplistic, but right. it's great information, and you, and you made it common sense for us, uh, Sean. I appreciate it very much. Sean Tuma, uh, with us. how do we find you online if people wanted to reach out for your services? Two ways. One, my website, www.seanetuma.com, and the other is a hashtag on Twitter for a group I'm part of called Cyber Avengers. So hashtag Cyber Avengers. And those are secure sites, by the way. Yeah, we can yeah. guarantee that. <laughs> I was just it's on, on your Twitter. Site. It is. It's, on Twitter. it's on Twitter, so it must be true. Right, right. Sean, thank you so much for your time. We'll have you on again, hopefully uh, with better news. Amen. Thank you. You got Take it, care, buddy. Sean. Take care. It's 850 WFTL.